You've heard of video games. They're pretty popular. But what if we went another layer deeper? Games within games. One minute you're blasting away infected, the next you're- I'm a weirdo. What the hell am I doing here? It's pretty brilliant, actually. Let people take a break from the game itself without actually exiting out of it. There's no shortage of possibilities. Maybe it's gambling, or playing an instrument, or reading a book. I must finish my cleaning, sir. The mistress will have my head if I do not. Cleaning, eh? I have something for you. Here, polish my spear. <laughs> Whatever it is, these activities can be super memorable chances to deviate from a game's formula and try out something fringe. And I figured I'd share with you a couple of my favorites. We've got the obvious examples like Yakuza, where the whole game is about these serious events, with Kiryu having to prove his innocence in a murder case and try to acquire this important lot of land, all while learning what it means to be Yakuza. But also, you've got this... Yeah. <laughs> For such a focused game, they managed to cram in all of this extra content. Pocket Circuit, Koi Koi, Bowling, Cat Fight, which I'm just gonna let play out for another second. You've got all these classic Sega arcade games stuffed into a game, which also has this. <laughs> Striking the right balance between main story and meandering is tough, but I know whenever I boot up a Yakuza game, I'm getting that five-star cuisine. It's pretty great! If you ask me, a good mini game is like garlic bread or hash browns. It adds on to the entree without leaving you too full to finish it. Shenmu is really funkin' good at this too. You've got this quick time punch game, darts, slots, then you reach Shenmu 3, where you got this, and this, and the logs, the forklift, frogs, chickens. There's so many goddamn mini games. Fishing, it's Sega. Everything has fishing. Everything. The big fighting. Soggy. Sonic Adventure was a goodie bag. Yeah, you had Sonic, but you also had five other characters, Casinopolis, Twinkle Circuit, Sand Hill, Hedgehog Hammer, Tornado sucked. But what didn't suck was the Chow Garden. See, in between levels, you attend this virtual daycare, completely different from the rest of the game, yet oddly perfect at breaking up the pacing of the levels around it. Thing is, these gardens are exclusive to the Adventure series. Every other modern Sonic game has nothing like it. And unlike the 2D era, which featured all these special stages to break up levels, 3D Sonic doesn't make much of an effort to do that kind of thing anymore. I always thought it was weird Sega has this diverse history of making minigames, yet Sonic's gotten less and less of that over the years. Like Secret Ring tacked on these multiplayer games, but one, nobody played those, and two, everybody wants the Chow Garden back. You can make a single player campaign that incorporates mini games into it. Just look at Zelda. Horse racing, snow bowling, letter sorting, fishing, sledding, the crane, Goron races, Dido's dive, super cuckoo. Holy shit, it's even got Goldeneye. Even though most of your time is spent progressing a plot or just exploring the world, there's all these different ways to break up the pacing and do something else. And I'm just saying, Sonic could learn a thing or two about this. Then you've got stuff like 64 on the DS, which hands you all these legendary mini games like Picture Poker, Mario Slides, Snowball Salam. <laughs> Nice try. I listen to Weezer. Metal Gear Solid 2 is all about clearing areas and item management, all while following this intricate plotline. Then Substance Version has this. A demo for Evolution Skateboarding featuring Raiden. Did it need to exist? Yes. Metal Gear Solid 3 does not have skateboarding, but what it does have is this. But it is a rescue mission. Rescuing who? Apes. What? Monkeys. But not just any monkeys. You said monkeys? A monkey. I have to save it. Don't worry. In true Kojima fashion, Substance also hid this nightmare sequence into the game where you play as a dude named Guy Savage fighting zombie hordes, which fun fact was supposed to be a preview for a unique standalone game, but that game never got made, so this is all that remains of it. Still better than Survive. 
Doom Eternal did something that I found really clever. If you head into Doom Guy's room and type Flynn Taggart on the computer, you unlock the entirety of Doom 2. If you collect all the floppy disks hidden across the game, you get Doom 1. Doom within Doom. That's what I'm talking about. Pokemon burns through minigames like Charizard eating Takis. We got the slots, Pikachu's beach, contests, secret bases, a personal favorite of mine. Super training? This was just a genius idea. Train your EVs by battling balloons. Also bad shining. Yeah, bad shining. And whatever Wi-Fi Plaza was, I don't know, I didn't use it. And you may or may not count this, but Pokemon Stadium. Can I just, oh, oh, it's so good. The Lickitung one, uh, the, the Ekans toss, the the, 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 the the shine simulator. See, the difference between this and Secret Rings is Stadium's mini games are actually fun. If anything, Pokemon does not do enough to take advantage of its 900 long roster. And I'm desperately hoping this new game they're working on, Pokemon Legends, learns a thing or two from Zelda in this regard. Kind of like how you find Korok seeds all over the map in Breathy West. I'm really hoping they create some type-based mini-games to litter the map in this new title. Because based on the footage we've seen, it's just an empty landscape with nothing to do, and that kind of concerns me. Ready? Go. How do you make mini-games for a platform fighter? The answer is, make you hit stuff. <laughs> My favorite credit sequence of any game, period, is Smash Bros. Melee. I can't read any of these names, but my monkey brain is entertained by firing at them. Oh shit, the monkeys are back! Red Dead Redemption 2 lets you play poker, dominoes, five finger filet, and I think that's pretty cool. Witcher 3 created an entire goddamn card game for itself called Gwent. And if we're being honest, I still haven't played Witcher 3, but I have played Gwent, because it got released as a standalone on Steam. And as a side note, it's doing much, much better than Artifact is. As someone who doesn't play card games, I found this one to actually be pretty fun. It's quick fire, but methodical. It's not super grindy or overly monetized, and it's pretty easy to understand even if you're not a card junkie. I don't see people talk about it much, but it's definitely worth a look if you're into that kind of thing. Fallout 4 had a bunch of these cute little Pip-Boy mini games, like this Donkey Kong style one called Red Menace, or Atomic Command where you shoot down missiles, Grognak, which I hear is basically a full game in itself. My point is, no matter how complex your game is, you can always take it one layer deeper and give players even more stuff to do. Whether that's stuffing in playable arcade games or making something entirely unique to the title, there's an endless number of ways to accomplish this. God of War- <laughs> I said, God of War. Uh, God of War. Uh, uh, God uh, damn it. Demonetized again. Not that it matters, cause I never upload this. I